This morning, uh, we have three members of our team presenting um, our problem of practice, and it'll be Dr. Stacy Ayers, our Director of Access and Equity, Brenda Froya, our District Community Liaison, and myself, Ibis Cordero, Coordinator for Parent and Family Engagement. And here we go. So this morning, we are going to start with um, sharing with you very briefly some of our strengths. If you want to learn a little bit more about our strengths for Chino Valley, you may refer back to the webinar that we um, recorded last year. We will be focusing on these five areas and um, we will move on to the next slide to begin with some of our data analysis structures. This slide will show you some information of how um, we worked with our students, parents, and families during the year of 2020-21 in these areas. So these are the actions that were highlighted and the services that we provided for all our communities. So you can see that we offered many services through the Hope Resource Center, Health Clinic, um, Attendance Counts, and Foster Youth Support. Our second strength is the Family Engagement Center um, staff and resources. In the last 16 years since we um, began our family engagement journey, we have grown into from a TOA to a district coordinator. We also have a district bilingual community liaison. One of our great strengths is that each school site has an action team for partnerships, and we meet three times a year to focus on community engagement, connecting it to student learning. We also have 11 community liaisons and bilingual clerks at most of our sites in our district, and we meet with them monthly to provide training and support at the Family Engagement Center. We currently, um, well not currently, we just had a family engagement survey that was sent out district-wide and with that we take that information to build our workshops um, yearly. This is an example of how we set the foundation for our community engagement. As you can see, we began in 2005 and still growing. So um, we have several implemented district-wide policies through the board and also administration, administration regulations. We have a school site plan for student achievement for every school and a school parent compact that the action team works on for every school site. Again, this is our partnership for learning network um, team that comes together three times a year to create an action plan to build community engagement. We work very closely um, and by integrating services throughout the district. We are all pretty much located at the Chino Valley Adult School, and this is a list of the different um, services that we have available here, and we meet together. We um, plan together how to better serve our families, so we have a list of some of them. We have the Hope Family Resource Centers that has about 14 case um, workers that serve at um, all the sites throughout the district. We have our health services, our behavior health center, our counselors are located here and our family engagements and we could services. So we collaborate together as a team to better serve our families throughout the district. Along with that, we have built many community partnerships that help supply the needs um, for our HOPE Center. So here you see some of our local government, nonprofit, and faith-based organizations that come together and bring um, supports and materials and needs that our family needs. And with that, I am going to hand this over to our director, Dr. Stacy Ayers, who will now explain to you our problem of practice. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. As I jump into our problem of practice and the process that we um, went through in Chino Valley Unified School District to reach our problem of practice and then also starting to come up with an action plan, I want to just give you a little bit of context that um, my role as a director is um, new here in the district. And so the fact that Evie's just shared um, all of our strengths, that was an important starting point for us, especially for me being a new team member for us to brainstorm um, what's going well in Chino Valley related to parent engagement before we really could start the process of 
peeling back the layers of what we wanted to do to be able to um, improve our practices going forward. Um, so the problem of practice has gone through many different um, re revised versions, and this is, this is where we have landed today. Um, there is a need to eliminate barriers to improve authentic family engagement by cultivating trust and collaborative two-way communication. So even though this is our problem of practice today, I want you all to know that this has really been a journey for us to be reflective, um, and we are still continuing to um, talk about our areas of improvement, and this this could get tweaked more in the future. But for now, this is this is our our problem of practice that we would like to focus on. So. Um, we also landed on when looking at the six core root causes for ineffective community engagement. Um, when we when we went through our improvement science activities, we really had some some strong discussions around two, really three of these um, that really resonated um, with our district. And so the the dominant one that seemed to come out of the work that we did is the lack of belief that the system's success is critically dependent on its relationships with students and families. And I think that you will start to see that um, when I show you examples of the, the work that we've been engaging in as a team. So in order to identify our root causes and, um, and uh, of our problem of practice, we engaged in three different types of improvement science activities. We started with empathy interviews. We also did um, five whys, and we um, spent a good amount of time on a fishbone activity. So we're gonna dive into the depths of that to share with you our work. So what we found was, is, uh, as we started to come together as a team and started to really identify what it was that we wanted to focus on this year and what the root causes were, we had to take some time just to sit and have conversations with each of our team members. Our team members are made up of a variety of educational partners and all of us are coming to the table with a different perspective on what our barriers are um, and what our challenges are so that we can move forward with better engaging our families. And so through a Jamboard um, type of activity, we started to um, brainstorm ideas just as, as we were hearing them by listening to each other as a team. And what we found was um, there were a lot of places we could start in regards to improving our family engagement system. And we needed to be able to um, kind of dive a little deeper and start to organize our thoughts. Um, so we started to take all of those ideas and um, cluster the post-it notes in, um, I guess, chunks, if you could say, of common themes that we were seeing that, that all of us were sharing as a group. And so in the next slide, we intentionally put this in <laughs> into our presentation because we, as I mentioned before, it was just kind of this huge elephant and we were all as a group feeling like, oh my goodness, you know, where should we start with this? So by, by doing the chunking activity, we then moved into five whys because we really wanted to start to ask our questions a little more of, you know, maybe why are we feeling this way or why um, do we believe that these challenges are existing in our district and, and what are our barriers? And so ultimately by um, taking, going through this process, we started to peel back the layers and we were able to break it down um, into five different areas that we might want to focus on. Um, we we broke it into two-way communication, trust, engagement, collaboration, and authentic feedback. And we knew that all of those pieces were still pretty, um, pretty big and pretty large to tackle. We even started to look at data um, sources and our K-12 insight survey, which is what we use to be able to inform our LCAP every year to help us narrow it down. 
Um, so ultimately, we took these ideas and then applied this to the fishbone activity on the next slide. And so by taking those five areas, we then started to kind of organize our thoughts in a more unified manner. Um, we were able to brainstorm what do we believe the barriers are in each of these five areas that we had tackled. And after going through this activity, we realized that um, we had five areas, but really they all related back to how we wanted to improve our two-way communication with our families. Um, that was really what we determined was our primary focus. And the, the other um, categories here really became descriptor words. We wanted that two-way communication to be authentic. We wanted it to be trusting. We wanted it to be collaborative. We wanted it to be engaging. And so ultimately our goal for our district is to, to focus on the improvement of two-way communication across our system. And so here you are looking at a summary of the work that we did as a team. Um, obviously when you do a fishbone, um, the work can be very in-depth and messy. We had lots of post-it notes everywhere, all over um, some chart papers, and then clustered those to be able to make these categories. And so um, we have now started to move towards taking these ideas and biting off what we can, we can chew um, and move it into action plan. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our district community liaison, Brenda Freya, and she's going to tell us a little bit about where we're at in our process for creating an action plan. Oh, good morning, everyone. Um, so after identifying our barriers came time to create an action plan, as mentioned. And as you hear, see here, we have an under construction sign on this slide because our team felt like we needed more time to make a more in-depth plan. But for now, we decided to start with the focus, with these focus points here. So first, um, we thought we will create an, a PR plan. In our family engagement survey this year, we found that a high percentage of families didn't know about the Family Engagement Center. So um, with the PR plan, it would help the community know who we are, what we do, and how we can support them. Uh, the Family Engagement Center, it would benefit the Family Engagement Center, but also other service providers here in the district and the community. Second, um, we thought we would create a professional development plan for staff. So for example, we provide training and supports for staff to be able to meet parents and families where they're at and supporting their um, child in their academic journey. Third, um, to create a plan for family services and workshops, especially in addressing the needs that were expressed in the family engagement survey. And um, the way we plan to monitor our progress is with uh, stakeholder input, various school district um, and governance committees, also by using our K-12 parent um, insight survey and our um, annual family engagement survey. Strategies to overcome the problem of practice. Again, you'll see the under construction sign here. Um, this is still also in development but some examples of the strategies that we'll be using to overcome the problems of practice is to offer training such as uh, parent square training for staff and parents and um, other services to improve our two-way communication and to build and strengthen um, relationships with families. Our stakeholder involvement consists of school staff, such as principals, um, site liaison perspectives, community members, such as service providers uh, from the city, uh, parent support and facilitator support from our um, county partners from San Bernardino County. Um, also, we have parent leaders um, and parents that are from, um, that have children that are English learners. Um, our Hope Center that uh, provides services of um, McKinney Vento and um, services for our low-income families and community. Family Engagement Center staff, such as our coordinator, uh, district community liaison, and access and equity staff, our director and assistant superintendent. And we're also um, 
using our survey data and our parent um, survey data for um, such as um, stakeholder involvement. And now we've come to our part of the presentation for questions. Um, if Dr. Ayers or Ebis would like to provide any more information, but thank you for listening to our um, problem of practice. Thank you all so much. This is awesome. And I saw in the chat that apparently there are some, there's some crossover with what some of the school systems are doing. So that's really amazing to see. Well, thank you all so much. I feel like I'm also learning so much about the districts and what's going on in, in the school systems. And I really love the, uh, the more personal approaches that people are taking, especially the trauma-informed approaches. It's so, so important.